Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. Hello, dear friends. Welcome to the Daily Prayers on Kardec Radio. This is our moment where we pause our activities and we consciously connect with God, with Jesus, with all the good spirits, the healing doctors, the mental spirits, all the benevolent forces in the universe that we are being graced with, that God made sure are surrounding us. And we know we are grateful. And we also know that the best way to connect with on high is through prayer. It is literally turning the mirror of our souls towards on high so that we can reflect in a more concentrated, in a more pure way, God's rays and God's love back to us. And that is exactly what we are doing right now. It is opening our hearts, opening our minds, opening our souls so we can receive better the love and the mercy the guidance, the healing, all the support we need to be able to better navigate through the vicissitudes of life. And as we, with so much gratitude in our hearts, are receiving the gifts, we of course will not forget our brothers and sisters in need. As a matter of fact, all of our brothers and sisters and we will be sharing the grace with all of mankind who touches our minds, our hearts. Yes, we are all connected and every thought ripples out into the universe and creates a fluidic image. And that is why we pray for this way, we will be more connected with the charity that makes up the fabric of this universe. And we're kindly asking for permission to begin to look deeper into a text by Leon Denis today. And so be it. Thank you for joining, dear friends. We are turning to Spiritism in the Arts. It is such a lovely book, we can barely put it down. And today we will be looking at an excerpt of chapter five, chapter three it is, and it is entitled, The Artistic Sense. And Leon Denis says, the eternal law of the universe the sublime purpose of creation is the fusion of good and beauty. So we'll say that again. The eternal law of the universe, the sublime purpose of creation. So this is our sublime purpose. And of course, even of all of creation is what? It is the fusion of good and beauty. So turning our minds towards the good, our words towards the good, our actions, our feelings, always doing the good. And therewith bringing in beauty, that fusion is the eternal law of the universe, goodness and beauty. And of course, the personification of that was Jesus, our guide and model. And we are striving towards becoming more perfect in that sense of fusing goodness, 
goodness in everything, benevolence and beauty. These two principles are inseparable. They inspire all the divine work and constitute the essential basis for the harmonies of the cosmos. So these principles are inseparable, goodness, benevolence, and beauty. And they inspire all the divine work. And we can imagine that, right? If we f our hearts are open and we see the good in all, no matter who and what, then we are in harmony with the cosmos. Thought, he says, since the divine intention is good, so God's intention is always good. And even if we don't align ourselves always and don't even recognize the goodness, even in our suffering, the divine intention is good, manifests itself in beauty. So thought aligned with God, with on high, manifests itself in beauty. Because everything that we are creating stems from thought. Thought is life, Emmanuel teaches us. As we think, we emit, and as we emit, we attract. And in the spirit world, it just takes a thought, and hope buildings will be created, fluidic images create. So through thought, fluidic images get created. But even here on earth, when we are building buildings, cathedrals, and the likes, it originates from thought. And the more aligned thought is with this goodness and the beauty, the more divine the manifestation here on earth will be. Every being in its ascent will have to pervade itself more and more with this sovereign thought. So the idea is to permeate ourselves more and more with this divine thought that's steeped in goodness and beauty. And with this will and endeavor to realize it inside and outside itself in ever more perfect forms. So our goal, our mission, our path is to expand the divine thought that's steeped in goodness and beauty outside of us, inside of us, and in ev ever more perfect forms. As we ascend, as we transmute, as we evolve, our sense of beauty, our expression of beauty and goodness will increase and is increasing. Happiness. Okay, so he says, um, we're backing up. And he says that the endeavor to realize this goodness in thought inside and outside, outside of ourselves in ever more perfect forms is our goal. This reminds us of the gospel according to spiritism. There is a chapter and it's dedicated to being perfect. He says we will become more perfect in beauty and goodness, right? It's chapter 20. Um, so it's chapter 17 and there Alan Kardec helps us to understand what perfection looks like for us on earth and he adds to the picture as we're striving for this goodness and this beauty that Leon Denis speaks about Alan Kardec fleshes it out for us he says the essence of perfection is what can you guess what the essence of perfection is Good question, right? I know we know it. So the essence of perfection is charity. The essence of perfection is charity in its broadest definition because it entails the practice of all other virtues. Yes, and that we garner from the gospel according to Spiritism, that charity is the most sublime um virtue of all virtues and actually incorporates all other virtues. So charity sums it up. And that's why charity is our sublime goal in our seeking for perfection. And what is the absolute antidote? It's selfishness and pride. And they are the opposite of charity. 
So what is true charity? And Alan Kardec helps us out again. We know that Alan, that Alan Kardec asked that question in the Spirit's book. It's recorded in the Spirit's book. And the Spirits give us an answer. And here, it's very similar. He says, true charity is benevolence. That's the good world. It's the goodness that Leon Denis speaks about. It's indulgence towards others' imperfections. It's self-denial and devotion. So benevolence, indulgence, self-denial, which is part of charity. It's we cannot be charitable if we don't deny ourselves at times. So-called inconvenience factor, right? Charity does not pay attention to whether it fits into our schedule or not because the heart opens and we just do what needs to be done. And he says devotion. And in the Spirit's book, the spirits also point us towards forgiveness. And of course, forgiveness is so important because it helps us to open our hearts in general, even towards ourselves, because often we have the hardest time to forgive ourselves. So this is true charity. And then he swings over to true moral people, persons, and he helps us to define it in a whole chapter that is warmly recommended to read because it would be a great companion study. You can find it on page 282 in the Gospel According to Spiritism, and it's entitled Moral Persons, and we'll just pick out a couple of items. Here, Ellen Kardec helps us to understand that truly moral persons are those who practice the law of justice, love, and charity, which we also find explained in question and so form in the Spirit's book, the very last law, divine law. So the truly moral person practices the law of justice, love, and charity in its greatest purity. If they question their conscience about their actions, they ask themselves if they have violated this law, if they have done any evil, if they have done all the good they could, if they have willingly disregarded any opportunity to be useful, very important law of labor, any useful activity, right? So we always want to be useful, which is part of charity. If anyone might have a complaint about them, dash us. And finally, if they have done unto others everything they would like to have done unto themselves. So the golden rule features prominently in this equation of us striving towards goodness, us striving towards beauty, following the law of charity, love, and um, justice, love, and charity. And charity being defined as indulgence, benevolence, self-denial, devotion, and forgiveness. So we see how important charity features in our, on our path of perfection. And then he continues the whole chapter. He explains more of how a moral person looks like. There's also a chapter that we're reminded of that's entitled Without Charity There Is No Salvation, which further underlines the importance in our lives of charity. And there we know that all humankind's duties are summed up in this maxim of without charity there is no salvation. It is chapter 15 in the Gospel According to Spiritism. Warmly recommended to look at it again. Yes, we, I know we've all read it a million times. And yet every day our minds, our situations, our openness differs. And we hear different things. And it permeates us in different ways. So without charity, there is no salvation. And um, the Apostle Paul adds to that and he says that to submit all of our actions to the test of charity and our conscience will respond to us. Leon Denis says it too, Alan Kardec says it too. And how do we best do it? St. Augustine helps us out also, we find it in the gospel and that is our nightly review. where We go over all the thoughts, words, actions, feelings, everything that emanates from us, that emanated from us 
in the day we just fulfilled and we examine it and we let our conscience do the work. And from my own experience, usually those things that are not so aligned with God's will, they pop up first because our conscience knows, right? So this helps us to perfect ourselves. And he says, in order to practice the good, the action of the will is always necessary. The will is the CEO of our minds. The will really runs the show. And in order for us to become more perfect, we will need to educate our will and align it with God's will, right? So it's very logical. And then he says, so aligning our will is always necessary. Whereas in order not to practice evil, idleness and negligence are often enough. So if we just sit on the couch and we idle and we think we're doing good because we're not doing any evil that way, well, we need to rethink that that maxim, that that idea, right? Because as a matter of fact, we are still doing evil if we're not doing good and we won't be accountable for it. So that helps us to perhaps to align ourselves. So for all who practice charity, all who practice charity are Jesus' disciples. So we're all Jesus' disciples as soon as we practice charity. Whatever the denomination to which we belong, it doesn't matter whether we're spiritists or atheists or nihilists or Catholics or Jews, it doesn't matter who we are. As long as we're study as long as we are practicing charity the virtue of all virtues we are disciples of jesus so let us go back to um spiritism in the arts leon denis and he says happiness should consist in assimilating this law and accomplishing it so we will become happier and express happiness more when we make the law of the the eternal law of the universe this the, the fusion of goodness and beauty our mission becoming more perfect becoming more moral people practicing charity the deep inner joys that will result from this practice are an obvious demonstration of the universe's goal and we know that we don't even need outside stimulation when we have this inner stirring, this connection with God, where our thoughts are aligned, swimming in goodness, and we just pass it on to our brothers and sisters. Joys, say the spirits. So according to the spirits, joys that human speech is powerless to define. These, lo Sorry, we cut in. The deep inner joys that will result from this practicing the law of beauty and goodness are an obvious demonstration of the universe's goal. Joys, according to the spirits that human speech is powerless to define, we will then experience joys that we can't even put words to. Our human language will fail in the face of this deep joy that we will be feeling when we practice goodness and beauty, charity. This law, this essential goal, spiritism not only teaches us, but also shows to us the meaning of, the means of attaining and practicing it. So in other words, just flip that sentence around a little bit, spiritism helps us to practice this law. It not only teaches us about the law, but it also helps us to practice this law. And that is, through Jesus, through the gospel, through all the books, the Andre Louise books, Leon Denis, helping us from all angles, putting the light on charity, for example, which is at the core of the teachings, right? So spiritism is extremely helpful for us. For one century, we have witnessed a colossal development in industry and its inventions with the discovery and application of the physical resources of the globe. Now we need to keep in mind he wrote this Leon Denis wrote this book in the 19th century, but we can attest to the fact that the development is not stopping, it still continues. So we can say it still applies to us today. 
So the material evolution, he says, requires a parallel evolution. So he's inviting us not to get stuck in only materialism. It requires a parallel evolution, both philosophical and religious, without which the intellectual powers would increasingly turn towards evil. And the world would collapse in a cataclysm whose last war, which is the Second World War, would be only the prelude to further destruction. So what is he saying? He's saying that for centuries we've witnessed a material evolution happening. But this material evolution that is still going on, of course, right? Maybe we've become even more materialistic than 200 years ago. Requires something. It requires a parallel evolution. And that parallel evolution anchors us in God. It's a both philosophical and religious revolution. And without that, our intellectual powers turn towards evil. Because then we don't want to help other people. Charity is meaningless to us. It's me first, me and my acquisitions, my attachments. But we're not worried about anything else past our nose tip. So for that matter, to stay aligned with God's goodness and beauty and to strive for more within ourselves and then as a result around us, we are invited to turn for example, towards spiritism, which has a philosophical and religious arm. We know there is a scientific, a religious, and a philosophical part to spiritism. And we also know that they need to work in sync. They need to work together for all of us and planet Earth to evolve. So he says, above our current lifetime, which is only transitory, it is necessary in all things to bear in mind the other life, the spirit life and the future life, which, it's, which, which is its goal and it, its sanction. So we need to keep in mind that this is not our only life. It is many lives and there's of course life in the spirit world. So he points out that this is vital to recognize, realize, and practice in our daily life that we are multidimensional beings. We're not just operating on this plane. It is only through an ultimate agreement among sciences and philosophies and the more advanced religions that thought will be able to reach the highest peaks. And humanity will regain confidence and peace with the knowledge of essential truths under their various guises. How beautiful. So he is underlying the importance for philosophies, sciences, and advanced religions to fuse in order for humanity to regain this confidence and the peace and the essential truths. And he started off this section by saying that the eternal law of the universe, the sublime purpose of creation for which we bring together philosophy, religion, and science is the fusion of goodness and beauty, of the good and beauty. And he's pointing out we can't just be materialists to reach that. No, we do need a philosophical inclination and study, a religious aspect in our lives, and the scientific. They need to work together. So this book is fascinating, and this is just one tiny little piece that we wanted to bring to you today so that we stay connected and we know our past. The, the gate is charity for us to become more perfect, more God-centered, more beautiful, and better. More goodness in our lives, more benevolence, right? So dear friends, you're invited to close your eyes for the closing prayer if you can. And we're going to bring in some music. D. 
dear God, beloved Jesus, dear Leon Denis, dear Alan Kardec, and of course Mother Mary, we thank you so much for this lesson today, for us to be reminded of the importance of charity as the sublime virtue, as the virtue of all virtues, guaranteeing us to draw closer to you, God, to be, become and be a better disciple of you, Jesus, of practicing charity, benevolence towards all without distinction, indulgence towards others' imperfections, more so than our own, and of course, self-denial and forgiveness. Forgiveness is a key to our success as well. For a heart that is constricted as a result of resentment has a hard time being charitable, which is the paved road for us to ascend to fuse goodness with beauty and aligning ourselves with the goodness and the beauty of God in the universe created by God. For us to be in alignment with the whole, our goal is to become more perfect, to work on our vices, to study and to practice, to increase our knowledge, both scientifically as well as philosophically and not forgetting the religious aspect, devotion, but also then making use of all the knowledge in order to make a difference in this world, to be of service, to be of support, to share of our resources. Yes, dear God, you are so merciful and we feel it and we can't other than be merciful with our brothers and sisters as a result. Yes, we want to share more of ourselves and thank you for the opportunity you give us every single day, keeping us in our body, sustaining us, allowing us to make a difference both by undoing our mistakes that we've committed previously but also making a difference on in the outside world by helping yes we're grateful thank you thank you jesus thank you dear god and thank you leon denis for making this so clear to us and so be it Dear friends, what a powerful, beautiful moment of pausing and connecting, turning our Wi-Fi called charity and connecting with God. John, thank you so much for joining. Abby, dear friend, thank you so much for joining as well. And all the other people that haven't said goodbye, haven't said hello, please feel embraced, warmly hugged, and God bless you. Take care, friends.